Hello, and welcome to a Cloud Developer Channel. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through an upgrade process for your standalone service fabric cluster. Now, what we have here is our five node uh, service fabric cluster. And what we are going to do is we're going to first uh, go to a website where we can actually download the package and I'll walk you through the actual upgrade process, which is pretty straightforward. So, uh, and here you'll see I have five nodes. I have one application running. There's uh, eight replicas in it and we're going to go ahead and upgrade it. So let's go ahead and get started. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to search for service fabric standalone and it's going to take us to a website. Um, this is the Docs uh, Microsoft website. And in here, it actually talks about how to be able to create a standalone cluster when running on Windows Server. But um, if you actually scroll down in the section here, there's an upgrade in the section where it talks about the process of actually performing an upgrade. Now, uh, what you'll notice here is there's a, a way to actually do it when you have uh, your service fabric cluster connected to the internet as well as the offline version of it. Now, my instance is actually connected to the internet as well. Um, so it actually, I believe already downloaded the latest version of the package because every time I try to uh, actually register the new version, it actually tells me that the version is already registered. And um, the actual command led to get the registered clustered code version comes back with uh, the information that it already has the respective instances needed uh, on the actual cluster itself, but it's just not upgraded. So uh, what I'll show you is the process of actually going through and triggering the upgrade process and making sure that it uh, goes through smoothly. So the process is pretty straightforward. So um, what we're gonna do is first, Let's actually um, go back real quick and I'll show you where to download it in case you need to do a standalone or disconnected offline mode installation. So in here you'll see that there's this download link for Service Fabric Runtime and when you click on it, it will actually go ahead and start downloading the, the cap file that you're going to need. I'll go ahead and um, close this here. And then when you go to the upgrade section, the first section talks about being able to uh, run the online version of the installation. The section talks about how to connect to the cluster. Then you get the, uh, the version numbers that are available. And then you basically trigger the process for uh, the upgrade to occur. And then um, you have this commandlet here to actually allow you to check on the status. You can also use the Service Fabric Explorer and I'll show you in a moment uh, how to do that as well. And then if you have no connectivity, you basically get the cap file that gets downloaded and you go through the process of uh, getting the, the base version that uh, should be available just so you know which version to specify. And then you uh, trigger the commandlet to actually go ahead and copy the actual cap file itself into the service fabric image uh, store. And then you register that uh, new code package. And then you basically tell it to go ahead and begin the upgrade process as well. So the only difference being is that you download the cap file up front and actually upload it into your service fabric cluster. And then you perform the the checks to see if the upgrade process is going smoothly uh, or correctly by running this command or using Service Fabric Explorer as well. So um, let's actually open up PowerShell here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, connect to my Service Fabric cluster. And now the first thing I'm going to do is actually remote into one of the nodes in the cluster. And I'm going to use an enter PS session. And then in here, uh, I'll go ahead and actually connect to the Service Fabric cluster. And the connection endpoint would be, uh, in my case, dev sf. And then 19,000 is the port number. And it uh, connects it, um, successfully. And then let's go back and find the command to actually obtain the um, the code version information here. So I'll go ahead, go ahead and paste that here. So you can see it came back that uh, this is the version number that I actually need to upgrade to. Um, and then, so these are the two versions that are actually registered. Now, if you go to your Service Fabric Explorer and you click on details, in this details section, uh, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see the version number of the actual runtime that you are currently running. So in my case, it's 5.7.198. 
0.9494. Now, if I go back here, this is the first uh, version number that it lists, and then the second version number is the one that I care about. So let's go ahead and copy this version number here. I'll go back here, and then I'll uh, let's actually copy this command right here, and then I'll just copy this code version, and then uh, we'll specify the dash monitored and as well as the fail uh, failure action, so it actually rolls back. So let's go ahead and paste that down here. And then if we actually trigger the process, uh, it will just come back saying that the process actually starts. So um, before we do that, what I'm going to also show you is this upgrade uh, section. So it tells us the version number that we're currently running. It also tells us the upgrade domains, which are UD0, UD1, and UD2, which are basically upgrade domain 0, 1, and 2. And then uh, the current state is completed and uh, that the rolling forward uh, action has completed. The uh, other information here um, also talks about the uh, upgrade mode and things like that. So if I go ahead and actually trigger this process here, you'll start noticing that um, it starts updating the information. So in this case, it started going through the uh, upgrade domain zero uh, update process, and then it's going to get into update domain uh, one as well as uh, number two. So, um, and actually one of the other things that uh, is important to note, as it's actually going through the upgrade process, it will actually wait for a certain duration of time to make sure that uh, the upgrade domains are actually working successfully before it moves to the next one. So uh, to be more specific, if I go back to this uh, documentation page and run this command here, it's easy to see the, the details. So. If I click on, or if I run this command uh, to get the cluster upgrade, because it's actually going through the upgrade process right now, actually, my connection has been uh, killed to the cluster because it's actually upgrading one, probably one of the nodes that I was connected to directly. So let me go ahead and reconnect. So right now it's actually having, a, oh, right. So it actually exited out uh, the session. So let me go ahead and enter the PS session again. And here, if I'll run the command again, um, you'll actually see that it's currently going through the upgrade um, and it's actually doing the post upgrade safety check. So, but you'll see that it's still doing upgrade domain zero, it's in progress, and the other two are actually going. So, uh, the thing that I want to show you is actually this. So, health uh, check stable duration. This uh, two minute uh, time frame is the amount of time it actually waits be between the different upgrades. Uh, uh, to move on to the next upgrade domain. So it's going to take uh, roughly about 11 to 12 minutes uh, for my current cluster to actually uh, fully upgrade. And if you uh, click on the cluster map, you'll notice that I actually have uh, three fall domains as well as three upgrade domains. So right now it's going to this first one, then it's going to move to the second one, and then uh, the last one, the third one. So uh, let's give it some time, and uh, once everything is upgraded, we'll be able to check the actual details of the cluster and make sure everything got upgraded and everything is working as expected. So, um, and you'll see that if you actually go down to the section here, you'll see that uh, since I have it up refreshing basically uh, every two seconds, that it's still pending um, and the first upgrade domain is actually done and the next, the other two are actually in a pending state. So once this completes, we'll come back and actually test the application that was running on the cluster before to make sure everything is working as expected. So as you can see, the upgrade actually completed and we can see that the status of all of the upgrade domains is set to complete it as well as the upgrade state itself is being reported as rolling for completed. You can also see that the version number of our code package itself has been updated to 
1.221.9494, which is the, the version that we actually um, needed or asked for uh, the upgrade process to actually go to. So everything should be ready for us to actually validate that our application is running on top of our service fabric cluster. So let's go ahead and open up a new tab and I'll just navigate to the application that is already deployed on it. So as you can see that we get our SF contacts MVC cookie demo um, that is hosted in our cluster. And then if I actually start refreshing it, you'll see that I'm actually hitting different application nodes or the service fabric nodes and uh, the application is behaving as it's expected to. So I can go ahead and click on profile. Um, I can go ahead and try to log in. And everything that we've built in, in the past for this application is working the way we need it to. So basically that is, that, that is how simple it is to actually upgrade your service fabric cluster. Now the thing that you just have to make sure is that um, the version number is actually released by, uh, by Microsoft. So, and you can actually watch that by, um, by going to their um, service fabric um, block page. So if you find that block page, they actually will be, will be posting messages. Now soon they'll actually be releasing a newer version of the uh, runtime, which is going to be version 6.0. And uh, I'm looking forward to actually testing the, out the new version because they have some uh, enhancements and some bug fixes that are going to be part of it. So if you have any questions about this particular topic of how to upgrade your service fabric cluster, uh, please go ahead and leave your comments in the comment section below and I will respond as quickly as I can. And I will talk to you next time.